Welcome to Donington for my first ever real life club race in the UK. Of course, you guys know that I've got to get my six signatures to get my A license so I can drive in Brick Car this year with Praga. And in this video, I'm going to be trying to get the first two, which means I have to finish the race, not take anybody out, not do anything stupid. Basically, just be here for the SR. Now the reason why I'm doing voiceover right now is because unfortunately a lot of the footage has quite a bit of wind noise over it. I tried my best to save it, couldn't really do much unfortunately. So if you are wearing headphones, a bit of a warning, but there will be subtitles in places and of course a bit of voiceover when needed, but I hope you guys enjoy the video nonetheless. So the day goes kind of like this. We have about an hour or so until free practice go around sort of see what the circuit's like which is going to be very handy at the moment because it's freezing out there um, then quality then we have the first of two races they're both 15 minute races one at about 11 o'clock today and one at two this is kind of interesting it's my first time being here as a as a competitor not as a spectator so completely different vibe but feeling okay so far i thought they'd be a bit more nervous and a bit more kind of scared but i'm feeling, feeling good should be good so what we're going to do now is we've got to basically take my helmet down to the screw in the ears for them to go, yep, that's a helmet. And then you have to pay them for stickers to have the, yep, that's a helmet on there. So I've got my two pounds here. It's kind of weird having like currency in your hand after all this time. But um, yeah, got to get that done. And then I think it's really us. That's all we've got to do, really. So to reiterate, the reason why I'm at Donington is because of the license system here in the UK. Now, because of the power to wait ratio of the Praga, to race it, I need to have what is basically a national A license. So think of the Gran Turismo licenses, it's actually quite similar to that. Right now, I have my ARDS license, which is the equivalent to a club only or national B license. And to upgrade to the A, I need to get six signatures, finish six races at club level to sort of prove that I'm capable of driving something a bit faster than an MX-5. Speaking of MX-5s, here's my car for the weekend. 105 horsepower at the hub, about 960 kilograms with upgraded suspension and a spec Avon tire. Basically, you're flat everywhere and throw it through corners. It's fantastic. But after that, I got all strapped in to go out for qualifying, which would decide our grid order for race one. I qualified 25th out of 39, so sort of in the middle. Um, and to be honest, like, I kind of thought it was qualifying. <laughs> felt like only minutes later it was time for me to get strapped up and ready for my first ever circuit race here in the UK. Well, your camera's on. Enjoy! That's the main thing. this big crash on the outside of T1 there four or five cars making their way into the gravel which basically gave all the places back that I lost <laughs> off the start so that worked out nicely for me and then I just sort of tried to settle into the race as quick as I could I mean the whole point I'm here is just, just for the SR as you keep saying just to get the signatures so I wasn't being too racy but then saying that I couldn't quite resist the mover here on this 56 a little bit slow coming up into McLean's and Coppice so I took the place and then made my way down the straight and just narrowly avoided that car and marooned on the inside there which is a bit scary I had eye racing vibes there I think he's going to come back and just roll onto the circuit then lap two some of the cars had instance in the first lap are coming back through the grid this white and uh, red car is one of the quicker cars in the race I think and I just got a little bit spooked a bit in my mirrors there as you can see my well offline coming into the old hairpin he just chucks it up the inside and because that slows me down the car behind as well the purple car makes his way back through this car is all about momentum and when you lose it you find yourself to be a bit of a sitting duck speaking of this is 22 I was trying to find my way around him I had a great scrap with him for a couple of laps just trying to go around the outside of McLean's 
there, not really a place to do so. But then down into the second chicane, easy place to get a move done here. On the brakes, nice and late. Chuck it on the inside, nice and easy. Uh, up now towards the hairpin. But it wasn't quite that easy as we then caught the gaggle of cars in front. These guys were having an awesome time. I was thinking, do I want to get involved in this? Do I? And of course, the racer in me is like, yeah, just get stuck in. Don't worry about those signatures. Although I was the entire time. Managed to get past the 11 here. There were three wide going down to that section here, but 11 backed out. I didn't, so I placed game. But then coming down the crane of curves, I made a bit of a mistake here. Got a little bit too crossed up on the steering wheel, a little bit too severe with the inputs there. And as you can see, the car all sorts of upset all the way down. Tried to correct it, keep the throttle in, but but just went a little bit wide there. I went to go mow the grass a little bit, just helping out the groundskeepers. Nice, safe rejoin there, just making sure that I'm out of the way. And again, after this point, I was like, maybe I should calm down a bit, you know, I was having fun there racing. But nope, straight away, back on, <laughs> back on the, the 21 here, up the inside. You can see behind as well, the guy in the black and yellow MX-5. He was someone else who had a couple of incidents, I think, and was... Um, coming back through the field uh, quite aggressively and I saw that happening so I just let him go by and I didn't want to get involved in that at all then coming up to McLean's here he gets forced wide a little boop there from the guy in the blue onto the the gravel so he falls back behind us once again and I was a little bit slow coming through this uh, chicane here because of this guy in orange he messed up the corner and then as a result look in the mirror bang thank you mate um basically the 55 just decided that he was going to try and drive through me and didn't and uh, he actually got uh, i think a black flag for that uh, or a black and white flag anyway and then of course the orange car let him back through probably seen what was happening behind and didn't want to get involved anymore he was probably my send of the race chucking it up the inside at the chicane late on the brakes just onto the runoff there on the inside of the chicane on the exit so pretty much extended that corner as far as it would go but really fun then the orange car thought oh i want to go at that and you see i have to steer right to the outside of the circuit he uh, uh scared me off my line big time there would have been big contact there and the reason why i didn't just sort of take the contact one because that's stupid and two because this isn't my car i'm renting it so any damage done to the car i've got to pay for which again explains why i was maybe a little bit cautious but that was race one done we survived came home in 20th position i think it was in the end so up a few places in my qualifying can't ask much better than that. One signature down, five to go. Yeah, it's insane. Like, like off the grid, I was like, I'll just take it easy. And, like, you get swarmed. Like, you have to almost back out of it or you get hit. It's kind of mad. So, um, the Xamax 5 guys have this around. So, and I've not really mentioned properly yet, but Mike Epps, ex BTCC driver, Mike Epps, was my teammate for the day. He came second in the first race and was giving me a couple of useful tips to try and find a bit more time out there before we got out for race two. Uh, he's also a super nice guy. I got on really well with Mike, so hopefully we can do some more stuff in the future. There was about an hour and a half or so between races to sort of chill out and just try and understand what I could do better. I, I knew that I had a bad start in the first race, so that was my main port of call. Also not being afraid to get my elbows out as much. I am there of course with a purpose to get signatures, but I also want to make sure I'm getting actual racing experience because sort of trundling around and letting people buy isn't really what racing is. So my goal was to go out there and just have a better race. And given that I was starting slightly higher than I was before, I was hoping maybe to try and sneak into the top 20 once again. Go race to start a lot better than the start in race one but still not actually that good in the grand scheme of things i'll just put a little disclaimer here and say if you're again seeing a small british man get fucked for one lap at donnington then maybe look away because things don't go exactly the right way here and this is why you see the car in front in the black with the gold stripe i decided to follow him down the crane of curves for the first time should have really gone to the inside here for the overtake but no i stayed behind him had to shift down to third gear he slowed me down so much there on the apex and look what that does for my momentum absolutely just swallowed up by the guys behind Behind. I lost five or six positions there just in that corner alone which meant although I started 20th I went down the 28th by the end of lap one and here's me getting 28th back there from the car in front bit of a shake of a head there a bit frustrating but it happens and again it's just experience for me but then started a couple of uh, overtakes to get some places back here's a 23 car I go up the inside here of the chicane I think he saw me coming from quite a while back and just sort of let me have it which was nice and I, despite overtaking I still got a decent run here coming through um, the chicane I managed to get up the inside of the 111 martini car there and for an overtake down into the hairpin at the bottom. And then look who's, look who's back 
back. It's our old mate in the uh, orange and blue car. This is probably his send of the weekend here. I absolutely love doing this. Just chucked it out the inside here at McLean's. Bit of a lock of the brakes in the way and he gave me the room over in the kerb there. And I, even so, I still had great momentum on the car in front and I had a great run through McLean's here. And you can see we're running side by side towards the second uh, chicane. Have the run, have the inside line, brake late. Thank you very much. Up into, I think it was 23rd position or 24th at this point. And then on the outside, you see, uh, he actually still tries to keep the position. He's there on my right now. You can't quite see him on camera, but I had the inside line here, had the run up towards the hairpin. So I was able to, de to defend the place fairly easily as we go on to lap four. Now, um, well, I said lap five. Now we jump ahead of that because I caught these guys at about a second and a half a lap whilst I was, uh, once I was free of the cars behind, which is a really nice run. But then I got into a different problem. These guys were sort of squabbling and then I saw how close these guys were racing. And again, that sort of little voice in the back of my head just said to me, Jimmy, you got to keep it clean, keep going. Otherwise you're going to end up having some sort of incident. And there was an incident in front of me um, where someone went over the curb and I had to basically just avoid them get completely off throttle avoid the, the uh, crash altogether and that's why I, I dropped a couple of seconds to the cars in front which was I think was a shame because I was definitely quicker than the cars in front of me at this point but that's not how things work in racing it's uh, about being in the right place at the right time and speaking of here's the final lap but a great place to spectate here, so to speak. Uh, three cars in front, they're all fighting really hard. I'm gonna take you through a lap and what's going through my head right now as we go down towards T1. Breaking a little bit early and I probably should have done there, down to third gear, onto the curb on the inside, throttle flat pretty much instantaneously when you get off the brake in this car. And then we go down the Craner curves, up into fourth gear, you keep fourth gear here, you don't use fifth, it's a little bit too long for this car for any sort of speed. About 105, 110 mile an hour over the curb on the inside, the car just floats a little bit there but you get it right it feels absolutely fantastic and then into the old hairpin I could have taken a bit more on the right hand here I think but then got good momentum all the way through so good in fact that I'm in a position now to maybe have a look up the inside at McLean's like I did in that orange and blue car but the guy in front hasn't covered he's looking in his mirrors he knows exactly where I am he pulls to the inside here gives me the line on the outside not really a place to overtake there I, I thought about maybe trying to just yeet it round the outside but I would have ended off in that gravel I think so had to slot back in behind but of course us fighting now is giving that white car a little bit of a respite as we come now through coppice for the last time i was a little bit slow through here i tried to take a bit of a lesser line through there try to um just have a a shorter corner but i lost momentum unfortunately that was it done into the draft of the car behind but i'm a little bit too far back for a move but i know i'm quick for this last chicane at the bottom here so far i'll just send it through as fast as i can and try and get a run down into the hairpin on the throttle almost straight away as you come off the brakes it's absolutely mad but the guy in front had an equally good run through there he was in the, in the gravel on the way through and then we come down to the hairpin i see the guy in front looking for a move on the white car i think maybe if i can get a good run through here i can uh, just get something on the exit but there you get a little bit too hot on the way and had to correct on exit there and now the white car is the person in front of me towards the end of the race but that was about it for me I couldn't quite catch the guys in front they were squabbling all the way to the line but it was an awesome fight to watch just a shame I couldn't quite be in it as you see the guy in the black car there sending it into the last corner what a hero but came across the line I think it was in 22nd place so uh, made up I think it was seven eight places since my start so a decent race not how I wanted it to go I wanted to try and aim for a top 15 but I was happy nonetheless. Hey Jimmy! Right then, so day done. Um and so 20 20th and the 22nd. Second race I got sort of wrecked as you would have seen at the start of the race but I had a good comeback. And really we came and did what we wanted to do which was get two signatures. So awesome good start four more to go and then we'll be good for that Praga license. So um a big thank you to the guys that go for it. MX5 Racing for uh, putting up on me, <laughs> poor guys, and uh, also to Mike Epps, well Mike was really good, he helped me with a lot of stuff, um, helped me get a bit quicker in the second race too, there was still definitely a lot of time and a lot of um, experience to be gained, but I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy with how it went, so hope you guys enjoyed it too, like, comment, subscribe, do all those good things, I can't even bother to do like a catchy jingle outro thing, just, just hit the line button. See you guys next time. Love you. Bye. Oh,